Wonderful. Uh, I wanted to welcome everybody to the summit. It's a fantastic event and it's a real honor to be here. Uh, our organization has spent more than the last decade understanding sales processes, procedures, and technologies for ways in which that we can help to understand increasing rep efficacy, increasing productivity, while also making life easier for the reps to increase additional output. And as mentioned, uh, I believe that cold calling is dead. Now, there are many more ways to get the right buyer, the right prospect on the right phone, but with so many accurate pieces of information from data sources, social media, LinkedIn, there's many different ways in which we can gather the right information. But I fundamentally do not believe that dials equal dollars. I believe that relationships create revenue opportunities. And so if we can get as many conversations and as many revenue opportunities, then we can build and service relationships effectively. Um, however, we see that the adoption of technology in and of itself often is not mirrored with changes in operational procedures, uh, changes in, in, in the adoption, the onboarding, and the training of the associated sales and service reps. And so we want to ask ourselves, what can we do in order to, to facilitate that? Uh, now we can reference a couple interesting data points here that I think many in the audience probably have experienced firsthand, but nonetheless, it's shocking to hear some of these statistics. According to our friends at Cirrus Decisions, it takes on average about eight calls for a sales rep to get an appropriate person on the call, and we found that to be true as well. Yet, ironically, often sales reps are only making just a couple attempts to get that live person on the phone. But with so much information available, for intelligent buyers to decide how they want to be serviced. We also find an interesting and yet shocking statistic from our friends over at Forbes that nearly 60% of buyers are unhappy with their sales experience as a result of the sales and service teams not having the actionable intelligence needed to provide that intimate engagement. And I think this also helps solidify our good friends just down the street at, at salesforce.com. I've showed many times that 92% of customer engagement occurs on the phone call, right? It really does come back to that fact that conversations create relationships and relationships are what create revenue opportunities here. But there's an outdated approach to how we're often utilizing these across fractured systems, point of contact, et cetera, right? We, we're all using lead lists to either generate leads, contacts, accounts, but oftentimes these systems are fractured across the CRM, another web portal, another database, and by the time the rep does the due diligence to determine who is the right point of contact, what's their role, who do I know that could facilitate me into this deal, I oftentimes have to pick up the phone and then call them. And if you think about that process, many organizations are still doing this by hand, and it's 10 clicks just to make that single call. And then at the end of the conversation, we have to do all this follow-up activity. And we all want our reps to log the activities, send the emails, update the fields, and adjust the revenue opportunity stage accurately in our CRM point of record. But it's unfortunate that it takes so much time and so much effort for our reps to do so that more often than not, our sales teams are not logging the information accurately in Salesforce or Microsoft or our system of record. And as a result, it makes it extremely difficult for our executive and management teams to make accurate and intelligent decisions on how do we improve our sales processes for our reps and support a process that's going to allow them to do more in less time and less effort. And this graph really kind of is meant to show these breaks in loops that I could be managing a single system, and even if I have some type of integration of the telephony into CRM, oftentimes that becomes another uh, barrier of data to flow in accurately and intelligently into the organization here. And then, of course, the rep at the end of the call, whether they're productive in creating a revenue opportunity, adjusting a stage, building an MSA, sending it out, that's many different systems and five or 10 minutes of processes at the end of the conversation. So what can we do to really support the success of our sales teams? Well, I believe that one of the things we can do is rally around increasing the quality of life of the sales rep. What can we do? 
to make them more productive faster. But the dichotomy to this is it often takes three or four months of training to get an account executive up to speed. And by the time they start to get up to speed, more often than not, we start to see a shift of that talented individual into another organization, which is expensive for the organization. It's often expensive for the sales rep. And so what can we do to focus on reducing the training window so we can maximize the output and minimize the effort to get revenue up in a measurable way? And then how can we increase the life cycle of the talented sales reps we have in our sales teams? And again, I believe a couple key components here in the theme are that we want to be able to have actionable and intelligent ways to measure and meter what our reps do, who they call, what they say, and what's the meaningful impact from these type of conversations. And by bringing this into a, a central system of record, then we, like our CRM, we have accurate information to determine how many times do we need to place a call to somebody to have a conversation? And how long does a conversation last? And what was the product of discussion? Was it related to a revenue opportunity? Was it related to a technical case? And if the, the data can be grabbed off these conversations and put into CRM, we can then automate these processes and increase output while reducing the training effort of these type of sales reps here. And if we can increase the life cycle of the sales rep, we can also measurably increase the productivity of the sales rep by significant margins. And I refer to these things by reports in Salesforce or, or Dynamics or whatever the CRM of record is so that we can identify the processes and procedures that our top performing reps do on a measurable and meterable basis. And then how can we take those processes and scale them to the bottom one-third of our sales team, the middle one-third of our sales team, and standardize the measurable productivity gains in automation across the team. And this really gets back to the fact that we can reduce the training time by looking at technologies that automate and analyze the, the, the processes and procedures here. And again, it really comes down to the fact that adopting technology in of itself is not enough to have a measurable and meterable change quickly. It also requires processes and procedural changes in the adoption of that technology in itself. And so I believe that there is a redefinition of the sales ecosystem and the technology associated that our teams are using, but oftentimes our organizations with the best intentions overcomplicate the technology stack by throwing tools at our sales teams and oftentimes this causes unintended greater fracture across the systems of record, which means it makes it more difficult to have these intimate conversations and build these measurable revenue opportunities here. And so I believe a few things here in this loop can be standardized across lots of different types of technology in both sales and service processes, where if we can leverage things like pre-call automation to determine who are we going to call, have we spoke to them before, what was the conversation about, what product or service did it relate to, and if that information is accurately logged into the CRM, then we as executives and managers can build intelligent and dynamic reports campaigns inside a CRM to present our sales team the right lead, the right contact, the relevant revenue opportunity to have that phone call with. And by using telephony that's natively built into CRM, we're also eliminating that silo of the external phone system. And so if we can reduce just those 10 clicks to call that person, then we're going to save a significant amount of time. And another interesting statistic from our friends at Forbes is 65% of a rep's day is spent in non-sales generating activities. So we really want to figure out what can we do to streamline those activities. And so by bringing the telephony into CRM, by leveraging things like workflows and Apex classes and heavy automation at ends of conversations, then we can start to take away the five or 10 minutes of activity that we need our sales and service reps to do, like un converting that uh, contact, opening that revenue opportunity, creating a task for the implementation team to welcome them on. Then we're going to improve the quality of life of the sales rep by allowing them to increase output while also simplifying their activities. 
And again, by logging all of this into CRM, we can create this predictive analytics loop of determining how do we interact with our clients when we call them on an opportunity? How do they interact with us when they call us and there could be an open technical case related to a six-figure revenue opportunity? And this predictive analytics allows us as executives to continually ask more actionable and intelligent questions in exactly how we're going to service here. And so while calling is still very much alive, it's much more of a complicated evolution and equation in, again, maximizing the technology that our organizations have all spent lots of money, time and effort to adopt without burdening our sales team by asking them to increase their activities, increase their logging, while reducing the time and effort they can put forth into the cell. So again, coming into this pre-call analytics, if we can start capturing the data of who's calling us from coming to conferences, who are we calling because we had a successful conversation um, at Dreamforce, as an example, then we can start as executives to build more actionable and intelligent methodologies that are dynamic, that are measurable, and that are repeatable, which then gets me back to one of the original points of the, the presentation that, again, I don't believe that dials equal dollars, but that conversations create relationships, and those relationships are going to create measurable revenue opportunities. So in doing so, then of course we want to optimize the conversation to make sure that our sales rep has a great conversation and a high quality call because we've all, all been on that phone call on our cell phone. You can't hear the person on the other side. They can't hear you. And that makes a near impossible relationship to service. So the importance of bringing good quality telephony into the CRM really helps to flatten how we're going to sell, how we're going to service, and really provide that intimate relationship here. Now again, utilizing things like the process builder in Salesforce, utilizing uh, uh, workflows, Apex classes, to really leverage those data points and take away those labor-intensive processes, we can add a lot of time back to the sales rep. And this powerful statistics, I'll repeat one more time, that Forbes has demonstrated that 65% of sales reps' days is spent on non-revenue generating activities. It's five minutes here, it's eight minutes there, it's three minutes here, it adds up. So the utilization of automation and analytics allows you to empower your sales team to concentrate on facilitating the conversations and adequately servicing these revenue opportunities instead of just taking orders. I can speak from my own experience with our sales team. We work really hard to get very intelligent individuals to do a great job, not just to log activities in CRM. They're very smart. It's below them. But we need it as executives so we can make intelligent decisions. So that becomes, let's automate those processes so they're doing what we worked so hard to bring them on staff for. Which then kind of closes this loop on how long are we speaking to people, what product or service are we speaking to them about, sentiment analytics within the conversation all allow management to derive more actionable and intelligence in how we are engaging both on inbound and outbound examples here. And of course, I can speak firsthand that if we've serviced clients well historically, that often relates to net new revenue opportunities. And we want to be able to measure how we're engaging with clients so that we can see the trends on when those opportunities may be ripe for growth in an account and be there as a partner to help facilitate challenges we've seen uh, that they may encounter. And this all comes down to the analytics and how we're conversing across all these different products, services within the ecosystem here. And so again, uh, we, the goal here is to generate meaningful conversations that tie back into sales and service opportunities. And even within our organization, uh, we've had clients that have grown 100% year over year, year over year, and year over year. And that is not just because of perhaps a good technology, but the way in which that a meaningful relationship is being derived with actionable and intelligent data. And then this allows us to then go back into that relationship and say, we've been here before, we've seen this before, we're here as a partner in your success to assure that this happens. And now while this is, uh, we see this uh, very powerful in outbound 
sales calls. There's also a large application to this uh, type of, of technology in inbound, right? So we want to be able to use things like the sentiment analysis to when somebody's calling into the organization, identify why they're calling in and what product or service does it relate to and are we getting meaningful impact in how we are addressing this. And before I continue with some other examples, can I field any questions in the audience around the analytics, the processes, the procedures, or, 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 or practices here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, there's lots of different ways to do this. Obviously, compliance becomes a big issue state by state, so we want to make sure that the technology is also measuring the regulations as such. Uh, but we found, even with some of our good friends at Stanford utilizing technologies and processes like this, what became obvious was sales reps could hit a lot of voicemails throughout the day, and that can be tiring. By the time they're coming back at the 2 o'clock after lunch, they're not leaving a sharp voicemails as they were in following up. And so if we can facilitate the reps having the ability to templatize the product service and the engagement, they can automate those processes, deliver the right message, and find out through the analytics what messages resound to the recipients that cause conversations to progress from opportunity net new, for example, to close one. Any other questions that I can, uh, can field around the conversations, the duration, uh, around the automation that's used in, in, in organizations? Uh, and, and, and I mean to say this, that this is a tech stack as a whole, not a particular solution that achieves this, but we often see, even with the greatest intentions, that the smartest individuals at the most prestigious organizations are often fighting fractured systems within the CRM the phone system itself, another database and record. And so having the mentality of being able to align these horizontal stacks into a vertical stack around the CRM itself allows us to empower the reps to do more with less effort and facilitate management with better decision-making processes. Sure, sure. Well, in, in many cases, the, the technology is agnostic to a particular browser or a hardware. Uh, it's all directly tied into the user profiles within Salesforce as an example. So you can tie iPhone phone numbers into Salesforce user profiles, which then can intelligently direct an inbound phone call. So for example, if you're a contact at an account with an open opportunity, it's tied to my cell phone number and you call in, you could ring my iPhone and when I answer the phone call, I'll see your contact opportunity contact with the open opportunity on my screen and be able to facilitate that intimate buyer engagement instead of asking who you are and why you're calling the data along the phone number will match in Salesforce to facilitate that information great question any other questions yes It's, it's a great, yeah, it's, it's a great question. So one of the obvious things that we find is that, you know, a rep is going to identify, here's 10 contacts I need to call, and they'll go through a view in Salesforce, right-click 10 tabs, and they'll go call them, they're done with that call, then they've got to move to another system, send an email, maybe send an MSA, maybe send a contract, then they've got to go back and make the next call, and perhaps that next call is a completely different industry for a different product. And so you have these complete shifts in talk tracks that make it very difficult for the reps to have this cohesion in these conversations. And so if you can facilitate like reports in Salesforce of, let's say, my contacts that I spoke to at the conference that had a demo with a revenue opportunity of pilot, then I can maintain that talk track and automate similar processes at the end of the conversations and give the rep more time to focus on what's my talk track as opposed to what are all the systems that I need to interact with to log them in there. And if they don't log them in there, we have imperfect uh, um, data in the CRM, which makes it extremely difficult to make intelligent and timely decisions. Great question. I saw another one back. Yes? That's a great question. Um, this really comes down to what I believe is full native applications inside of things like Salesforce.com where you can leverage 
profiles, roles, permissions, page layouts, and then you can create uh, a specific role which then is only presented specific call outcomes, and those call outcomes then only automate the related processes to this type of contact with this type of opportunity or a related uh, case to that type of thing. And so by being able to leverage these uh, configurations within CRM and the structures within it, it's not manipulating an external tool to an integration, but leveraging that customization that we're all paying so much for, for the top tier CRMs? Great question. Any other questions that I can uh, answer out here? Telephony has been in a particularly different, difficult solution over the last 10 years. Uh, as, as you can all see, I mean, I, I'm willing to bet that the majority of the audience is using a system like Salesforce.com and then using something that's either a standalone phone system or a click-to-call application. But getting the data across the systems does make it extremely difficult for managements to measure and meter all that data back into the CRM. And one of the observations I've seen in many large deployments over, over the last 10 years is I think there's been this shift where technology has been designed to facilitate management's goal of gaining more actionable and intelligent at the cost of the quality of life and experience of the sales rep. And what I mean by that is constantly throwing new tools, new solutions into CRM without having them properly integrated together, meaning our sales rep's time of that 65% number is getting bigger and bigger and bigger despite the expense of technology going up and throwing no technology at it. So I don't think just throwing technology at a solution is going to cause an improvement, and technology in and of itself doesn't necessarily get better. It requires a lot of smart people working very hard in order to maximize that technology, and it becomes that catch-22 where we really do want to look at how can we improve the quality of the experience of the rep by allowing them to increase output by doing less things in less time. The catch-22 is I've seen many times sales quotas in large organizations be increased 1.5x, 2.5x, which is a good thing for the organization, and the reps are actually achieving more output in less time and effort, and we've seen on the back end that it's also improving the quality of the customer journey by facilitating that right information along the right steps as well. And so that circle becomes more of a holistic approach in sales, not just making the right outbound calls to the right leads and the right contacts at the right time, but also facilitating and aggregating that data as to when our contacts with open revenue opportunities call us as an organization so we know that they may be calling to update an expired credit card number on file or that uh, they are at their maximum in seat licenses uh, and they're coming up on a renewal and that call needs to get to the right account executive. And these are ways in which we can not only increase output in the sales teams, but also facilitate and improve the quality of the buyer's journey that we interact with. I want to give you guys some time back in your day, but before I do, can I facilitate or answer any more questions? Wonderful. Well, thank you everybody for your time today.